Singapore. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. We're very lucky to have Hugh Miller with us, the winner of the 2021 Dragon Hike and Fly. Uh, Hugh, thanks for coming along. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, um, I've just got to point out, I wasn't trying to win. I just, I had a really nice weekend in, in uh, at Park Farm in the North South Cup the weekend before, and I just wanted to get back. So, <laughs> so this is a good excuse to come back to Wales. <laughs> that was really, and I thought, wow, well, I can go to Decathlon, get a few bits and pieces. And, you know, if I, if I sleep out, that'd be quite nice too. I quite like wild camping. So I thought, well, yeah, it'd be quite fun this. Great. And you looked very chilled as well. You looked like you were there to enjoy yourself. Yeah, I was. Um, I, you know, as I say, I, I, it was, uh, yeah, I don't normally sleep very well before, you know, if, like, if the forecast is really good, I can't sleep. I'm actually quite, quite wired normally. So um, but I slept really well. And um, yeah, and I, I got a lift to the start with Helen, um, Helen Reed, uh, with Dougie. And uh, at the start, Dougie was like, he said, have you done one of these before? And I said, no. And he said, have you done any training? And I said, no. And he just looked at me, he couldn't quite believe it. But I was like, well, I really haven't, you know. I kind of walked to work, that's about an hour along the seafront. Doesn't really count. Um, but yeah, no, massive. I mean, it felt like a really nice event from the off, you know, loads of people helping each other out and offering to support. We had T, a guy who, who'd come to help, um, Alex, uh, he offered to help as well. So yeah, it, it just felt like a really nice, nice kind of, nice event it didn't look like a paragliding event did it i mean everyone's nope. like it's a butcher's dog it was like what's what yeah. am i doing here it's like the start of a marathon <laughs> yeah it's di different vibe isn't it totally definitely. um yeah definitely yeah. definitely we like that yeah that idea of t yeah there's a bit of teamwork to it and everyone yeah. helps each other out um so what i'd like to do here is talk about how you flew the route um what some of your decision making and what worked for you on the day um so We've got a screen share at the moment, uh, which um, I would hope you can see. Yeah. And you've got a little white dot to the west of Livinus. Uh, and there's no track log for the first bit. So that was your quad bike ride, I'd imagine, to the, to the summit right. of the mountain. Yeah, um, got away with that there, I think. And then if we zoom out a little bit, we were actually, I'm sending you up towards Hay Bluff. So yeah. you had options to walk almost like 45 degrees off the course line uh, and you decided to walk almost 220 degrees off the course line to find a, a hill so first of all why did you go to Van Frunick? So when you announced the route the night before I was like yes we did this long. we did the, this the weekend before we 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 flew from Merthyr up to Penny Fan up to Hay Bluff and back to Krakow so I thought okay this is this is this is doable this is a good route uh, and then I looked on a map and that Fanny, what's it called? Fanny, Fanny Frack? Uh, yeah, something like jumped that. Jumped out, jumped out at me. It just, I thought that is the ridge I'd go to in this forecast to free fly because you just look at the front of it. It's got a nice, clean fetch. Um, Brett, Penny Fan has got these sort of horrible bowls and, you know, yeah. it's just like every single ridge is going to be in the lee of the front one. So I don't know. I just, the shoulders probably worked, but then somebody said that you had to walk down before you went up. So I just thought, well, yeah. you know, that's the, that's to me, that was the obvious choice. And also by the time we got there, we, we'd be up there at 10, 15, 10, 30, that's when it start working. Perfect. And we could jump onto Penny Fan and, and, and be off. So yeah, it, cool. it seemed like a, an okay decision, I think. Yeah. So it looks like you, you took off. Yeah, I didn't really walk all the way up. I walked about half, half, halfway up, and it was soarable, so I just soared up from there and went along the ridge. And um, yeah, that's good that you are thinking like a hike and fly pilot because you don't walk all the way up. You don't need to. No, didn't. Right away. No, yeah. no. Um, the wind was a little bit more west northwest than northwest, but it had, it had, it had. You know, it had. It took. It had. It took that direction fine and we climbed it was amazing actually we were climbing out at like i think it was 10 10 15 in the morning um, yeah it, that was that was i think to be honest that was the nicest bit of the day was just the unexpectedness of climbing out you know it didn't look great and looking over the back and going well we might as well go you know yeah um yeah cool. that was that was lovely and so and then gliding go. over yeah. to penny fan crossing over that path i mean it's already packed full of people it's quite yeah. a shallow slope it sort of waved hello went over there it's about 100 feet i don't really know why i saw all the way along the ridge to the south side the clouds look better along 
this sort of that bit there but anyway then I've soared all the way back and then I think I got a climb right over the top of Penny Fan yeah um, I got that bit yeah I think I got about six to seven hundred feet above the top of Penny Fan and I was aware of the wind it wasn't didn't feel super windy but I w- definitely wanted to stay well above the ridges and I think the track shows that I'm just about managed that until I then saw a couple of guys I think it was Greg and an advance um climbing kind of on the last shoulder so if you go right a bit yeah we'll come along um I mean, it was people talked about it being rough it was it was a bit rough but I think what was happening is I think it was actually lifting better on the south side of the slopes and probably also lifting on the shoulders to the north of the main ridge and along the main ridge it wasn't working that well probably because it was in the lee of penny fan and probably just because why would it work there you know it's not the yeah. end of the day it was that horrible wind direction actually for penny van in that it like you say it's running between penny van um cribbin and vanny big so it's almost aligned with that main spine isn't it yeah um and you can see your drift and those little turns that you took were always drifting parallel to that yeah like yeah. you said we we like to fly that ridge in a northeast almost okay yeah completely yeah, makes sense. Completely. yeah um and we did have a reserve deployment as well so i don't know did you see that or probably behind you i think i didn't see it no no i didn't see it uh, i don't know how high he said was either um when he deployed but um, yeah he's pretty yeah. pretty high good his deployment it works beautifully for him he was actually slightly further north than you were as well so did he have a, an air designer donut reserve rescue system ali did that contribute to the success of his <laughs> he didn't actually he had a air vuisa which is not a make that i'm familiar with but i know it was square could... wasn't it i think square yeah. is the way forward i think it's the way to go uh a little bit of drive on it so he did drift actually right uh, into the wind all oh, right so yeah but you don't know i suppose which way you're going to go but yeah, obviously you got through there totally clean, uh, no problems really. And looking at your altitude trace, you're nice and high above the terrain. And then uh, should we talk about this next part? I'll just zoom yeah. out. Yeah, zoom out a little bit. We can see what what sort of um, what the options are. Yeah. Okay. Can you zoom out a little bit more? How about that? A bit more. Go on. A bit, a bit more. more. That's it. Perfect. Right. So Perfect. from here, you've got to cross onto the. Um, the black mountains so uh, i saw that um greg and someone else were climbing in a very weak climb that looked like it was developing on the lee um just north of that lake over is it abba village or this one yeah taliban reservoir yeah tell about, yeah just, just north of there so i just stuck in that hung in it hung in it hung in it and then eventually i could see alex like scratching away on the little spine back just south of Clangorse lake and that just did not look look like it was working at all but there were little like um little wispy bits puffing up um on the the south of that little spine back ridge so i flew actually counterintuitively to, to the southeast side of that ridge and and got into a couple of they did feel a bit sort of i was higher than the ridge a lot higher but they did feel like they were forming and it's a southeasterly sun bakes really nice farmland lots of cr- cut grass tractors everywhere um so it, it looked like that was contributing to to some to some nice climbs that drifted me towards Bunch. <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah, from there I just glided glided across um, to uh, Clangos, met up with yeah. Dougie. Dougie pinged out, and I was left going. Where's the climb? The climb didn't seem to work very well. I got high enough to kind of start to transition again into you know, I was again pretty high, but I I could see that it was working in the lee of whatever that mm-hmm. lump is northeast of Clangos. What's that like? Uh, this one's called Minith Troy. Minith Troy. So yeah, yeah, it seemed to be working in the lee of that. Got a really nice climb there. Um, yeah, that's a good one here. Another yeah. lee sider here, isn't it? Really obvious the position of the. It looks like it. Yeah, it does. Entry into them, isn't it? Every time. Yeah, I don't know where I am on the where I am. Uh, oh yeah, so that shows, doesn't it? If you look on the the. Um, we get the, the bottom. It's eleven o'clock. Where that light. Yeah. Where Sorry, are we? Yeah, there we go. There we go. So it's, it's now yeah. like 11.30 or something. I'm, I'm yeah. still above the train. I'm not in the lee of the train, but I'm thinking it's converging behind it. So yeah. it's flowing either side and then meeting on the south point and going up, being forced kind of up. Um, and then I glided across to what, what, one fac. Is that right? Close again. Yeah. I'll do. 
uh, met with Dougie, and then we just basically straight lined along the northwest slopes to Habler. Alex yeah. had been very cheeky, and he just basically flew above Clan Gorse and then did two beats and, and yeah. flew along that little ridge. I didn't know that existed, that little ridge. I didn't know you could connect across that bit there that you can see. But you can. Yeah, you it's a awesome. lovely geographic feature that that the there is a pass, but it's on the higher performance wings. You can yeah, if you're high here, right. it's just an easy connection. Right. But yeah. Got it. Um, got like it. you say, most most of us flying XC always go over the back of line course. Right. Okay. Okay. But yeah, you didn't. Uh, yeah. And you've got to hey, this as you said, easy bit. Yeah. And then um, I didn't know which way to come back. To be honest, I thought, well, I've never, I've ne yeah. When we did the when we did the route last week, we, we we came back the same way as we went. But I was quite tempted to go straight straight line, but Alex went that way, and he was talking about the sort of oh, the magic the magic line that you take, you know, and you go back and you just straight line. He did the same. I sort of faffed about a bit and did a few three sixties, but he pretty pretty much straight lined to magic. Yeah, um, from just you know, on. Ran a question on that, uh, Hugh. Why did you think about going over the back? Was that you starting to think competitively about taking a more direct route or just for the fun of it? Or? Yes, probably. I probably thought, well, Alex is going to go back that way. That's longer. I could I could straight line it. There are lots of, you know, ridges facing northwest. Um, it, it, it was just a little bit blue, but... Um, but, yeah, I just thought I'd play it, play it safe, really. And also, it's still quite early. It wasn't very... I don't know what time of day it was when we were at Hay Bluff, about half 11, uh, 12? Yeah, we're still not even at, uh, we're now at 12.30, just as you're oh. coming back. Oh, so no excuse. Sorry, yeah, no. I should have straight lined. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're thinking, to me, it's like if we can fly straight, I know it's a little bit circuitous the route round, but you're not needing to thermal so much. Whereas if you'd got stuck into the Black Mountains, yeah. perhaps you'd have been drifting across the wind or across the track a little bit uh, the other thinking was stay upwind of the stay upwind of of uh, where we're going on to so that ridge line that we took definitely keeps us upwind which is a safer bet yeah um but as we went further south it i mean the north side of sugarloaf looked like there's a really nice cloud above it but okay. the orange looked blue everywhere kind of in the valley trical looked blue it didn't look very special um and i think alex headed off first got down to sort of the sugarloaf northwest so like you scroll down a little bit yeah um, so just to... yeah, so you can see yeah it wasn't really working and um yeah. i nothing kind of worked on this on the slopes of the sugarloaf so we started crossing over and i connected again with a very little bubble you can see me drifting from clan Wenneth, kind of towards waitrose yeah yeah this one and right? And I thought, well, I could see Alex kind of like, it's like lawn darts. So just going boom, <laughs> on the orange. He went first, Alex went first, then Dougie left my climb and boom, landed at the bottom. Oh, I don't fancy that. I'll just stay here. I'm about halfway up the orange. So I just stayed in it. And then um, I landed. I had a vet pretty, I wasn't very happy with my landing. I landed in the sort of the wooded bit, um, which wasn't very yeah. safe, to be honest. Uh, I thought I was going to make it above it, but I didn't. And Alex then said, well, look, if you ever get below 100 feet, just just start thinking safety. Don't think about anything else. Well, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, anyway, I sort of like kited up, pulled up, kited up, then took off, joined Greg, yeah. got up got up to the top. Uh, my instruments, I, had my, I was just on fly sky high and, and it wasn't tagging the turn point. So I had to kind of guess when I was in sector. I didn't really know. So that's why I landed a couple of times to sort of make sure I was in sector there. Okay, um cool. and then uh i think dougie and greg climbed out a bit before me when and they eventually sort of started crossing and i could see them getting sunk out and i thought well they're kind of going through all the bad air we've just been through we we know that that bit doesn't work um yeah. and from where i was i just sort of I just pushed directly into wind and kept getting little, uh, quite a lifty line. So I just kept going. And my theory was that it might be converging um, again, kind of somehow kind of around Gilwyn. There were a couple of little puffy clouds there that kept, kept sort of cropping up. So that's the route I took. And, uh, and I also thought, well, the longer I can glide into wind in lifty air, then when I do hit the sink, that's when I'll turn right and glide towards towards but there's no point doing it until i hit hit sync i didn't really hit much sync so i just just kept going then eventually sort of 
curved a bit to the right, got a, got a small climb and then was high enough to connect with um, with the northwest sort of spur of uh, Sugarloaf. And yeah. that worked. I messed it up. I went off exploring into that sort of bowl where that sort of circle is. Yeah, got really it. low, got down to, yeah, I don't know how low, but pretty low. And then, as you can see, connected with the original climb, basically, that was still working. So that that obviously was working very well. And again, that was quite lee side. It's quite lurchy and strong and again, not lee side, but it was working off the slope that wasn't into wind. So it was tracking along that slope, building as it went because um, that, that slope faces south-southwest. Yeah. Um, Hugh, I, I think got... this was your best decision. Or you made a lot of good decisions. This stuff here is really good, obviously. This is very good flying. It was entirely um, motivated by laziness. Okay. Because as, yeah, I could have landed and walked at one point. Where that dragon is now, that was when I was thinking, right, I should really land and start hiking up. But I thought, well, no. If I was flying XC, I would go and try and find the climb again. And yeah, I might get low and I might land in the valley and it might might be worse, but that's what I would do. So that's what I did. Had you got things on your on your instrument to show you um, that your glide to the next turn point is improving when you're in this weak climb? Because you are no. going a long way. <laughs> Nothing. No. I had no idea where the... All I could see was circles on the map. I had no idea how far from them I was um, because it wasn't it wasn't flicking through the, the turn points. And I, I don't really use Fly Sky High much. I'm not used to it. I didn't realise I could manually trick, you know, move to the next turn point. So all I knew was where the circle was. Yeah. And I'd sort of be tapping on the phone to try and get closer to it and then go go near it, basically. Um, yeah, so no, but I just thought, well, I could see the others walking up. I thought, well, I'm not doing that. I'll, I'll stay where I am. Um, um, do you have any rules when, you, in this situation, we have got to fly into relatively strong wind and you have a weak climb? Do you have any rules for yourself apart from I just don't want to land as to whether or not you'll stay in the lift or not? Just... Yeah, I think you, 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 you stay in it. You, you stay persistent. You stay stubborn. You just hang into it unless you can see something better. I mean, otherwise you will land, won't you? Yeah. If it's a half up, but it's going up a slope, then great. It's probably going to develop, you know, and that's what this one was doing. Um, if it's even if it's a zero and it's drifting up the slope then I mean this is the sort of flying I really enjoy I, I don't mind you know I I really don't mind hanging hanging on and hanging on and hanging on and seeing what happens I quite enjoy that because yeah. your focus just narrows right down to that one moment and that this 360 and then the next 360 and you know it's great isn't it yeah um, you have no choices you just have to stay where you are yeah and it's um of course, it looks like incredible patience, but if you're enjoying it, then it's not so much. It's all part of the fun. Yeah, I I think it's way more fun than being in a five up at 4,000 feet. You're really close yeah. to the terrain. You can see the grass moving. You can see, you know, if there's a bird there, that's incredible. You know, right, okay, do I move across to it or not? <laughs> this could <laughs> this could end my flight. And I've, sh I've sworn at seagulls before when I've gone across to them and it hasn't worked. So it's all that kind of like, you know, knife edge decision making, which I really I, I enjoy. Yeah, I think it's great. And come um, on, I mean, if you've done like a long bike ride or a marathon or something, I mean, that that, that requires patience. This yeah. doesn't require patience. <laughs> Unless, it's not like you're uncomfortable in your harness, is it? You no, know what I mean? True. You're just sitting in a harness, pulling a so, brake. Uh, and <laughs> did it, walking. Walking takes patience. <laughs> <laughs> and did it feel any different to your normal flying, knowing that you had the guys coming on the grounds underneath you? Did that? add to the, the excitement or fun or um stress not really because i just thought well you know i i thought that was stuff to be honest i thought <laughs> well, if they landed there it, it would have taken me two hours to walk to the top of sugar i was amazed when i eventually got on to um magic and landed there i was nearing the turn point and i got there was a text from dougie to helen going yeah i'm nearly there i was like well, you you were you were in you were on the river yeah. <laughs> when, I, when i basically top landed and all i've done is ball you know kited up a bit and walked up so yeah i was amazed yeah. how quick they are yeah unreal hey very very fast on the ground yeah yeah um lovely oh Hugh, so just to finish then, so we had a lot of, pay, well, yeah, not patience, enjoyment in taking this long, drifty climb, taking you back almost completely off track, really, where we wanted to go. Yeah. We skirts around the Sugarloaf. Again, we don't fly these slopes like this very often, get quite low again here. Yeah. But 
uh, again, you would you talk us just through this section towards the end of your your day, really? It's the last. Um, yeah, I mean, we weren't getting hours. we weren't getting as high. I wasn't getting as high there as uh, we were only getting to uh, about two thousand five hundred thousand six hundred feet, and I think it was just a bit stable and inverted. The climbs weren't great. There's sort of one one up, one to half, one half up, but I got that that climb. And then again, just looked at where the wispy clouds were, flew kind of directly into wind towards them. I think, again, there's probably a bit of convergence going on in the lee side of magic there. Yeah. Um, possibly, possibly not. Who knows? But, you know, why is it working in the middle of the valley? It shouldn't Amazing. be working in the middle of the valley, should it? Yeah. But it was. So there must have been some, something converging out. Also, southerly, southerly kind of slope going on. Um, and then um, I probably should have been a bit more patient and stuck with the last climb longer. Um, but yeah, glided, glided in, um, and landed kind of, uh, pretty much on the ridge level. I was probably two glider, two glider heights below it and thought, I don't seem to be going down too fast. I think this will yeah. be okay. So I was slight, very slightly in the lead when I landed, um, and then sort of, you know, got dragged through a couple of gorse bushes, trying to kite <laughs> up, gave up on that, walked up and, um, Again, wasn't quite sure where the turn point was. I had to zoom, really zoom in, but yeah, got it. And then just thought, well, it's not very safe. It's a bit lee sidey here. So I, I thought I'd walk on um, to the west, west southwest side because the wind was still west northwest. Yeah. And then yeah, it was pretty safe actually. Took off and yeah, right, great. In. And that was it. And yeah, some of the other guys did take off in the southeast bowl. Um, so yeah, a little bit more sketchy for them. I think they were desperate for position probably to finish. Um, but yeah, very safe, obviously a safe ending for you there. I think if I'd walked for the, the, the amount of time Alex had with, with his weight, I would have taken on the south, southeast slope as well, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you got enough time here just to tell us a little bit about your equipment that you used in the race? Uh, so I, uh, I, I, um, got a zeolite about a year ago and um i really like the way it's really good at sniffing out lift it's quite it moves about quite a lot in the air so it's quite yeah great great for low saves and things like that so yeah i really enjoy that and just a, a standard lightness three um yeah and a sausage roll that was in the official advice i think yeah to always take take a sausage roll and uh, yeah i had like half a half a trolley load of waitrose shopping in my in uh, in my harness i think the amount of food i had i was a bit i was a bit so i think the next time i think i'll just go and i will aim to sort of land and camp out and enjoy enjoy that side of it i was a bit jealous of everyone with their, their pictures yeah. from different places <laughs> that's kind of what i wanted to do but then i got a bit red misty <laughs> with yeah. in the so, so, okay you can always bring the tandem or i'll just try and double the route uh, next year send you around twice <laughs> um oh, it's really good fun really well organized very relaxed uh, yeah it's great really good yes yeah. um just i wanted to ask a little bit about the glider so we've still got some of the less experienced pilots flying three liners notice three liners almost gone entirely from the x alps this year there's a new zeolite that weighs under two and a half kilos for this uh, for the x alps how do you find the performance of the wing certainly on the second half of the flight where you had to get back into the wind compared to say mantra six a few years ago or something like this did you have done this on a three I don't, line? yeah i don't th i mean i never use more than i was never using more than like a third i think the trick what i've learned a bit in the last two or three years is you really shouldn't be using much bar when it's weak so even if you're flying into wind just just trim or maybe a quarter bar half bar you can really conserve a lot of height i remember gliding into goal at columbia a lot two years ago and I was neck and neck with another Zeno and he pushed full bar or whatever it was I, I was at trim he landed halfway to goal and I just cruised in and I thought okay. and you know the glide depreciates so much it goes down you know it goes from 10 to 1 to 5 to 1 so yeah. where you go full bar and um so I don't think it really really matters if you, you know if you're not flying on bar does it matter if you're on a two liner or a three liner I don't think it makes too much difference so I, I don't think the zeal goes any better than an m7 you know okay. the m7's got a lot more internal structure and it's a lot more um taut um yeah. But the two liners do give you more feel, so that you could possibly you can feel the air better, so you can feel feel a slightly lift your line or maybe hook a thermal a bit better. 
Um, but I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure, especially with these lightweight two liners. It's only a six point seven aspect. It's not like yeah. a, it's definitely not as good not as a competition, is it? Yeah, not as um, good as a Zeno. No, definitely not. Okay. No. Um, and are you flying that glider a lot now? Yeah, it's all I'm flying really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just because I enjoy it. I, I quite like light, lightweight wings because of the feel they give you. Cool. Um, and you mentioned using Fly Sky High. Usually, I suspect you take more instruments. Is that why you're rubbish. saying you don't? Absolute rubbish. Oh. Tim Pentreath. Goodness. <laughs> no, it was. It's great. I just very. I'm very. I didn't want to carry an Udi, so I just used Fly yeah. Sky High. It was. It was great. I just. It was the the, the operator <laughs> was at fault basically. <laughs> But yeah, strip back. You see, this is it. We can still get around quickly on the yeah, very light setup, even the electronics. Um, Hugh, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me uh, about your race. And I hope you'll come back next year because we I need will. the trophy yeah. back. Yeah. So you're going to have to come at some point. But yeah, we're, we're mad keen for you to come back and race again next year with us. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll, yeah. we'll see you hopefully in May. If not, June. yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, I want to move to South East Wales. I'm a bit bored of Brighton now. So Good, yeah, we've all seen the You're same very thing welcome. the last few years, haven't we? So it's nice yeah. to have a change of scenery. Oh, well, thanks again for do, uh, for taking the time to speak to me today. And no I know you're... thanks for organising, Ali. It's a great, really good event, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah you. very, very uh, unique. And uh, you're talking to some ex hops guys now. I understand. I've got to. to I'm ringing Thomas Turriat, and he's already pre warned me. He said. I'll only answer sensible questions. So I'm now shitting myself <laughs> about what a sensible question is. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll well, have a great day and thanks very much for your time. Cheers. Thanks, Ali.